Okay, so in this tutorial I'll be explaining uh, how the MIDI uh, signal works in Ableton with MIDI effects and this is probably going to be the most important concept that I'll be explaining um, throughout this series and also the most difficult probably to understand. So bear me with me for this one, this video might be a bit longer um, but I'll keep the next one short. So, so far we've seen what happens if I press a button, um, the, the button uh, has certain MIDI properties, so it's got the pitch, it's got the note on, it's got the channel, it's got the velocity, and it goes from the launchpad to Ableton. Ableton, um, we've configured it so far so that this track will receive this message, so this track receives messages from this launchpad, and this track receives messages from this one, so this track receives it. I can see here we've got the MIDI meter, I'll call it MIDI meter, I'm not sure if it's got an actual uh, name, and um, and you can see here, the Launchpad Pro acts kind of like a piano, and this is basically representing the velocity. So the velocity is basically how hard I'm pressing the note. So most Launchpads aren't velocity sensitive, which means um, that they always send out like this button here, which isn't velocity sensitive. Only these square ones are sensitive for the Launchpad Pro. So if I press this round one, um, it will go only to zero or 127, which is the maximum MIDI value. So either nothing or everything. Um, whilst these ones, if, if I press it really softly, you can see only the first one lights up. If I press it a bit harder, um, like it goes up halfway, and then if I press it really hard, it will go all the way up. So that's basically how, um, how you can visualize certain parts of the MIDI um, in Ableton. So I want to go a bit further and show you guys, um, by looking just at the velocity, how things get affected. Um, uh, throughout Ableton. So click uh, this arrow here or just double click um, uh, the title here of um, your channel and open the browser up. And the browser has various categories. Um, throughout this series we'll only be using MIDI effect, the MIDI effects category um, and much later on we'll be using Max for Live but that's for really advanced stuff. And good news here, we've only got eight effects in the MIDI effect category so there's not much to learn. And you only have to learn seven of them because I won't explain scale because it's completely useless, useless for light shows. So, as I said before, this is representing velocity, right? And you can see here the, the message is going into, from the launch pad to Ableton, to the track. And then you can see here it's being represented here. But this is where you put the MIDI effects, right? And you can see here you've got another series of dots which is the exact same signal. And the important thing to know here is you drag in your MIDI effects here, okay? Um, just dragging a few here. And you can see they go through um, from left to right. So here you've got this, and then you've got, you've got it here, and you've got it here, and then you've got it here. So basically the signal goes from the launch pad into Ableton here, and then here it starts from the left, goes into this component, then it comes out here, goes into this component, then it comes out here, and you can visualize it still into this component and then you have the final visualization just of the velocity mind you and then it goes out to the launch pad and keep keep in mind every single track has its own section so you can see I put these effects here but if I put a random here you can see you've got different um, um, a single section for each track so that allows you obviously to make a launch pad effect for this one and a different one for this uh, launch pad here so let's just delete these and as I said here, uh, we can see the velocity. So let's try and see in a bit of a visual way how this path works. So let's just drag in one. And you can see here, I'm, let's just use this actually. This is not velocity sensitive and it's always sending out the maximum value, right? You can see here, it's sending out the maximum value. So what's happening here is here you kind of have the velocity values and I'll explain this graph bit better later. But basically, if I take this point here and bring it down with the output high, so this is the highest output value that it can give. Right now it goes from 1 to 127, so it takes the lowest value and the highest. Um, actually, it goes from zero, <laughs> but okay. So if I squash this down, what will happen? Um, so before 127 as the highest value it can receive, it colors orange, and remember velocity is the color that will light up. If I send it to, I don't know, let's do 47, Boom, we get this kind of blue. Um, if I press it hard here also, if, if I still press it low like this, maybe it's sending like 10 now. So that's still between one and 47. So it will have its own color. 
But if I press it hard, harder than 47, it will just squash that value down and send out 47. So you can see that here. And you can see it visually because here it's going all the way up and then it's starting here on these dots and it's going all the way up. But here it's only going like halfway. If you're watching in, a, watch in HD, just so you can see this. Um, so it's only going half the way. So what happens if I put another velocity in and instead of changing the output high, so we're saying, okay, it can take anything that goes up to 127, we change the output low. So it's taking whatever comes in and it's saying, if it's lower than this value, just bump it up to whatever it is. And let's say, let's just go all in and do 127 again. And now we can see it's orange again. So it goes, if we have them off, it's 127 and it's orange. If we turn this one on and limit it to 47, we've got it blue. And you can see here it goes to the maximum. Here it goes all the way up, but here it only goes halfway. And if we turn, and here you can see we've got this off. It's going on, on only halfway. What happens if we turn it on? Well, the 47 here is going into this effect and it's bumping up that 47 all the way up to 127 again. And now you can see here it's still 47. So you can really see the signal here. So here's 127, here it goes down to 47 and it comes out as 47. And here it goes in, it gets bumped up to, to 127 and it goes all the way up again. And I just want to show you guys um, without seeing the this, which is kind of small, just something really visual and it will really show you guys why it's so important um, to understand uh, what to put where and how these all of these elements interact with each other. So we're going to have a look at the code effect first. And if you remember from the previous tutorial, this is um, the pitch of this button is 37. And what the code does is say, okay, uh, for example, if I set this to plus one, uh, it will say, okay, light this one up, so 36, but also uh, light the next one up. So plus one, 36 plus one is 37, so this one. So then if I press this, it will light these two up. Or if I press this, which will be, I don't know, it might be 50, whatever it is, um, it will light 51 up as well. So this is 36 and 37. Let's light up a whole row. Um, so now it's gonna light up 36, then plus one, 37, plus two, 38, and plus three, 39. So boom, we get a whole row. And that's what code does. Now let's have a look at separately what the arpeggiator does. So arpeggiator, if you know from classical music, it kind of does this. It takes a value and then it just repeats that value um, periodically. So if we've only got one value, it'll keep on just doing this. So if I press it like this, it'll do this. But say we've got a chord, and if we press multiple things, uh, multiple buttons, it will just go up. As you can see here, it's up. So 36, 37, 38, 39. You can see it's going, it keeps on repeating and going up. So, um, but if I keep it down, it will just flash that one note. So if we have the chord and it's sending four in here, it will be like I'm holding four of these notes down and sending them into the arpeggiate. So the signal is one note is going into the chord. Four notes are going out from the chord and going into the arpeggiator. Turn the arpeggiator on and it starts arpeggiating between those four notes. But what happens if we put the chord after the arpeggiator and press a button? So now we're sending this button into the arpeggiator. Turn it on and it starts arpeggiating. Just that button is turning on and off. So the arpeggiator sends the button turning on and off into the chord. And the chord will say, okay, we're receiving a button that's going on and off. That signal should also be sent to this and this and this. So it's basically gonna make the row go on and off. Why? Because it's saying, send this also to this and this and this. So you can see how dramatic it is just changing the, um, the order of these. Um, so one just makes things go up. I just changed the speed here just so you can see quicker. So having a chord into an arpeggiator does this, and then having an arpeggiator into a chord does this. So it's really important that you understand um, how these elements interact and you understand what it's doing and what, what you're sending into what. So I hope you understand that tutorial. I'm sorry it was a bit longer than the other ones. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll try to keep the next ones much shorter. And I'll be showing you guys basically, um, I'll be starting explaining how all of these uh, different effects work um, really in depth.